I'm going to hit one more real quick, and it has to do with audio assets in the library. And I'm going to talk about something called audio ducking. Now, a lot of us know that one thing we like to do quite frequently, of course, is to add music either as an intro or maybe we want to have it all the way through our video. But one thing that a lot of people get way wrong is they just don't know how to deal with the music volume level for the intro and what to do once they start speaking. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So for this particular example, let's see, I'm going to uh, try and remember which one I wanted to... Okay, so this is kind of a, a powerful intro, and I kind of want that. I want, you know, I'm, this particular video, I'm going to grab somebody's attention, and this works great for like a podcast intro. Think of it this way. Listen on the radio uh, when they have intro music, and it, you know, it's boom, it's pumping, and then all of a sudden, bam, it drops down to almost nothing, and the announcer starts speaking. The announcer stops speaking, and boom, the music pops back up. Okay, so there's a couple of techniques we can do to make that work. This particular little video segment here is about 30 seconds long, so I'm just going to use the short version, and I'm going to drop this on the timeline in the project. Okay, so what you see is a big, fat music track here, right? So I want the intro pumping during the intro during my title clip and then right about here when Joey starts talking about Kira the Wonder Dog I want that thing to duck way down so the question is how do you do that and then how do I keep a nice low level throughout his narration and then once he's uh, I want to use a longer audio track let's use the medium okay let's pull that in let's get reconfigured here Okay, so music starts. Joey starts talking right about here. So I want that to drop down. And then as soon as Joey's finished speaking right here, I want that music to come back up for this big finish, right? So that's kind of the scenario here. So here's how you can work with something like that. So I'm going to click right about where just before Joey starts speaking and let's zoom in a little bit here. I don't want it to be right here because he starts to talk there and I want to be able to hear it at that point. So we're going to move not too much, just some in front of it. I'm going to click on my music track and then I'm going to click on the audio tab and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to add an audio point. Right now and you might not be able to see it real well over the webinar, but there's a little dot here now. I'm going to move my playhead forward to, again, just slightly before the audio narration comes in, and I'm going to add an audio point. So now I got two audio points, one here, one here. So now I'm going to move towards the end after the narration and do kind of the same thing. I'm going to right about here add an audio point, move ahead just a little bit and add audio point. Okay so let's take a look at what we got here. What we have are four audio points. Now watch what happens when I grab the middle here and lower the volume see that right and for narration I'll generally bring this down to it depends on the music you're using but eh, probably no more than 20 percent tops and I'm gonna go ahead and preview this I'm gonna have a big strong intro and then BAM Joey starts talking and then whoop big finish right Hey guys, it's Joey Soto here from Smart Video Persuasion. And okay, you you'll see this used all the time by the pros. And I might even bring this volume up a little bit. You just got to kind of play with it at that point. But the secret sauce there is to get 
this middle to move independently like this, I had to define you know, where the narration is. Uh, and I needed to add this extra audio point to keep it stationary here and keep it stationary here, the level. And by putting these two extra points in, now I can manipulate whatever happens just in the middle. Okay, and that's called audio ducking. Sweet. Right? Is that cool or, or no? Right, so those are some things you can do uh, with the Camtasia library. Any questions that I missed? Audio points are awesome. Let me give you one other tip that I'll use. Sometimes I don't necessarily want audio playing while my narration is here, but here's another rookie mistake that a lot of people make. So let's see another way to use audio points because this is kind of awesome. So what happens is if this is my intro, right, the mistake a lot of people make is they will, you know, put an audio track on here and shorten it, right, so that it it stops right after their intro, okay? In, in most cases, that's kind of amateur night. What you'll find in most professional productions, of course, is that the music fades out as the speaker starts talking. Well, okay, so if you're not an amateur, maybe you do this. You lock your narration track, you know, extend the music a little bit into the audio narration, highlight it, and then on the audio tab you fade it out, right? Okay, well that works kinda well sometimes, but right here where the speaking starts, what you'll notice is that, gosh, I'm still at you know a pretty good level here. I'm not like at that 20% or lower level that I want to be. Here's a little secret I do all the time. Yes, I go ahead and put my fade out just like I did so that I still have some music fading out as the speaking begins, but where the speaking starts, I'll also add an audio point, and now watch the, let's make the music track nice and big here. Now watch what happens as I grab that audio point to my WAV file. Right? So it's like a mini duck, I guess. <laughs> now I can take exactly where the narration starts down to like 20%. And there's still some trailing off, which is the desirable aspect there. Right? And most of the time that'll sound pretty good. Hey guys, it's Joey Soto here from Smart Video Persuasion, and you do... Much more pro, right? Okay.